Hello dear students, welcome to the next video in the topic Moment of Inertia. The topic Moment of Inertia, we have already discussed the introduction portion, then the parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem. Now, you are going to learn Moment of Inertia of regular sections. So let's see one by one. So we are starting with a rectangular section. So consider a rectangle of dimension B into T. So the axes are this XX and YY. They are centroidal axes. Now for deriving the moment of inertia of this rectangle, we are considering an elemental strip PQ, which you can see in green color. And this, it is at a distance of Y from X axis. And the thickness of this strip is DY. And the breadth is equal to the breadth of rectangle that is B. Now, let's write the moment of inertia of this small strip PQ. By definition, we know the moment of inertia is area into distance square. So, this PQ, this area into distance from the reference axis. Reference axis is XX. So, the distance is y. We can say area into y square. So, the area of the strip is B into the depth is dy. So, B into dy into y square. Okay. Now, please note that the, the sine of y, you need not bother about the sine of y because we are going to take the square. You may think it is negative. So it's not a matter whether it is negative or plus, uh, positive because we are taking the square. So we are getting the moment of inertia of this small strip as b y square into dy. Now to get the moment of inertia of the whole rectangle, we have to integrate it from maximum from the minimum value of y to the maximum value of y. So the minimum value will be this is half portion is below. So this is d by 2 minus d by 2 will be this and the maximum value will be plus d by 2. So we can write it like this for the whole section ix equal to integral of minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 b y square dy. That will be the total moment of inertia of this rectangular rectangle. Now we can take b outside because it is constant. So this becomes integral minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 y square dy. Now what is the integral of y square? We know it is y cube by 3. And when you are putting the limits of in integration, this will be d by 2 cube by 3 uh, minus minus d by 2 cube by 3. So, we will get the final equation as b d cube by 12. That is the moment of inertia of a rectangular section. So, i x x equal to b d cube by 12. And in similar way, if you are following y, with respect to y, we will get the final equation as d b q by 12. Okay. So, i x x is b d q by 12 and i y y is d b q by 12. I shall suggest a simple trick uh, to avoid the confusion between i x x and i y. When you take i x x, this is the axis, then you start with the side which is parallel to the reference axis. 
so this case i in case of x axis it is b so b into the other cube b d cube by 12 when it is y axis take the side parallel to it that is d so d into the other side cube db cube by 12 okay this is the trick i am following you can have your own memory technique now we shall move to the next one that is we want to know what is the moment of inertia of this rectangle with respect to the base. So we know the parallel axis theorem. This, this is where we, are, we have to use the parallel axis theorem. So what is parallel axis theorem? It says the moment of inertia of an element uh, of a section with respect to any axis is equal to the moment of inertia of the centroidal axis parallel to the axis plus area into distance square. So when we are applying this case, so we are going to write the moment of inertia of base is equal to moment of inertia of centroidal axis. About centroidal axis, that what we have just derived, that is BDQ by 12. And the area into distance square, area we know it is B into D and distance, distance between these parallel axis, the centroidal axis and the, the base, the axis passing through the base. So it is d by 2. So area into d by 2 square. So we will get b d q by 3. Okay. Sometimes we can use this directly in case of composite uh, figures, composite section. Next one is a hollow rectangle section. So we have all, already derived the equation for a rectangle. So this is very easy. So the bigger one is having dimension b into d and the smaller one, the removed portion, it is b1 into d1. So it is the moment of inertia of a, b, c, d, the bigger rectangle minus moment of inertia of smaller one, e, f, g, h. We know the equation for both also b d q by 12 minus b1 d1 q by 12. Similarly for y axis, so for y we will start with the side parallel to it that is d. d b q by 12 minus d1 b1 q by 12. In some text we can say the dimension of bigger rectangle is capital B into capital D and for the smaller it is small b into small d. So we can represent in this way also capital B into capital D Q by 12 minus B D Q by 12. Similarly for Y Y also. Now moment of inertia of circular section. From now onwards I am not going to derive it because that derivation is not included in our syllabus. So, we can directly use the ready-made equation without deriving it. So, this is the equation. Moment of inertia with respect to x axis of the circular section is pi by 64 d raised to 4. And that will be equal to, if we are substituting d as 2r, so we will get it as 1 by 4 pi r raised to 4. This also you can use, and you can see it. This uh, y y is also in the same way. We will get uh, pi by 64 d raised to 4, or it will be 1 by 4 pi raised to 4. And uh, please note this is also the centroidal axis. We can represent it using i bar xx, and y y also i bar y y. That is nothing but this i by itself and for a hollow circular section similar to a hollow rectangular section this will be pi by 64 d raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 and for y by it is also uh, pi by 64 d raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 
also we can write it as pi by 4 into the r raised to 4 minus small r raised to 4. Now, this is for a semicircle and then a quarter of circle. For semicircle, so this I have marked two axes. One is the centroidal axis, red line, and the other one is the base or the diametrical axis, the axis passing through the diameter. So I x x I x or maybe I x x is equal to 1 by 8 pi r raised to 4. Actually, we got this by taking the half of moment of inertia of the complete circle. You imagine a circle, complete circle like this and this is the axis. So, half of it that is 1 by 2 into 1 by 4 pi r raised to 4. That is 1 by 8 pi r raised to 4 is the moment of inertia with respect to diametrical axis. And C, this is the centroid, the position of centroid. As we know, it is 4r by 3 pi. So, by using parallax theorem, we will get an equation i bar x equal to 0 0.11 r raised to 4. That is in, in terms of x axis. But about y axis, i y, again this is half of the moment of inertia of the whole circle. So, 1 by 8 into pi r raised to 4. And about centroidal y axis, as you can see, the y axis and the centroidal y axis both are same. In, uh, so, you can read it as directly pi r raised to 4 by 8. That is half of the moment of inertia of the whole circle. When it comes to quarter circle, again, we are taking the 1 by 4th of the whole circle when it is with respect to diametrical axis. As you can see this x, this is the diametrical axis and imagine the whole circle. For whole circle it is pi r raised to 4 by 4. So, 1 by 4th of it. That means 1 by 16 pi r raised to 4. That is the respect to diametrical axis. But this line, the centroidal axis, we will get it as 0 0.055 r raised to 4 and when it comes to y again 1 fourth of y this is axis 1 fourth of the whole circle 1 by 16 pi r raised to 4 and uh, centroidal y axis uh, I did not draw it actually so you imagine an axis passing through the centroid and parallel to the y axis so you will get the same equation like in the case of i bar x, we will get i bar y is equal to 0 0.055 r raised to 4. So, depending upon the situation in a composite section, we have to use any one of this. So, you will get more idea when we are solving the composite section. Don't worry. Now, this is triangle. And this is the last one. In triangle, I x, the moment of inertia passing through centroid. We know the centroid is at h by 3 distance from the base. So, moment of inertia about centroidal axis is equal to 1 by 36 b h cube. Again, uh, the parallel to the edge parallel to axis is B, then the height Q, B H Q by 36. The denominator is different from rectangle. And I X, I X is the axis passing through base. I X equal to 1 by 12 B H cube using our parallel axis theorem. And for I Y, nothing is written in I Y. Why? Because for triangle, depending upon the shape of triangle, we have to find the IY. We, we don't have any ready-made equation. 
for this if the triangle is like this you can assume a y axis like this so this triangle will be cut into two parts and for this part you can apply this equation and for this part also we can use the same equation when we know this height height means when considering y axis so what i'm saying you is this depending upon the situation and the shape of the triangle we have to find i y there is no ready made equation we have in your notebook Please consolidate the final equation of all sections, like we did in, in the case of a in the case of a centroid. So you will draw a table like this and do shape, then the reference axis, and then write moment of inertia. And you draw all the shapes. triangle circle semicircle etc and uh, uh, you can write ix and iy are separate also here ix and then iy or in the same column you can write both ix iy and then uh, with respect to base etc so that we can uh, when we are solving the composite section you can refer this table you'll get that result quickly okay the next topic is moment of inertia of composite sections. Thank you.